The Owl Show has ended. Let's talk about it, shall we? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm the Miraculous Guy. It is very nice to see you all once again. Wipe those tears. We need to talk about this last episode. Once again, I'll be separating this video into beautiful categories. The main trio, Luz Ida King, the rest of the Owl Crew, the Collector and their realization, Belos and his last stand, and finally, the overall end of the Owl House. Spoilers, you have been warned. Without further ado, let's discuss. Wow. Just to think, Luce, Ida, and King have come such a long way since their first appearance in Season 1, Episode 1, A Lying Witch and a Warden. During the first 20 minutes of this episode, we literally focus just on the trio and the collector, which makes logical sense because during the previous two episodes, Eden King had less screen time and few time with Luce in general. I'm glad we got somewhat of a reunion. It's revealed at last that the collector was literally playing, watching, and dreaming. The main owl trio being within a dreamlike state facing their insecurities, facing all their insecurities over the course of the series. Luce eventually waking them up for the foretold reunion. After this, they try to find common ground with the Collector, which I'll speak on more later. This eventually leads Luce to die because of the outcome? By the way, Luce dying could have been hinted all the way back in Season 1's episode, Sense and Insensitivity. Luce holding a page of Luce Azora dying. Creepy, I know. Even having strong parallels to Anne's death in her final episode, The Hardest Things. Just like Anne, Luce is greeted by a familiar looking being with godlike powers, this being King's dad, believe it or not, telling her she can only choose to choose herself and accept his powers and return to the demon realm. Of course, being the heroine she is, she goes for it, returning and saving the day. And of course, King's dad, who's been watching over them this whole time, leaves a dad slash bread joke for his son, dating back all the way to season 2, episode 14, really small things or problems, which is really lovely. So, unfortunately, the Owl Crew didn't get much screen time this episode, but this was made up with the previous two episodes of this season. Not to mention, not much development, but still a continuation I was hopeful for. Not to mention, we got a couple of callbacks. One being Dream Amity saying a witch's battle instead of a witch's duel. This is obviously a reference to Season 1's convention of Episode 5, Luce later finding it odd that Amity would even say that in the first place because she knows what Amity is like. Another being Amity finally being able to draw glyphs basically in her sleep. If you didn't remember, she had a pretty hard time doing this in the previous episodes of this season. After our time skip, Four years into the future, we later find out that Hunter has a new palisman looking very similar to good old Flapjack and cleverly named Waffles. But as a nice tribute to the late Flapjack, almost every member of the Owl Crew has a tattoo. Surprisingly, by the end of this episode, we are hinted at a spin-off which I will come back to later. But nevertheless, it was absolutely great to see the Owl Crew together one last time. Not much on the Collector. Most of the season focused on them and their lore. I can say that they were willing to listen and had a bit of a change of heart after explaining what happened between them and the Titans. But come on, bro really thought they were Steven Universe hugging bellows and crap. I couldn't help but watch in shock as this happened. I wouldn't be surprised if bro started singing a song about loving your true self. But I really love them by the end of this episode. We do get a proper send off to the collector who visits the Owl Crew as a star in the night sky. Embarking on a new journey to truly grow and find themselves. Farewell, Collector.
If I'm going to be honest, all in all, Bellos was a slightly mediocre villain. Not to say he was bad, but he felt a bit drawn out for me. I still think he should have been further hyped for season two. We should have stayed with Lilith as the main villain for season one. Although we kind of sort of got that, I feel as if the impact on Luce and the rest of the show would have been heavier. Take Star Wars, for example. Luke was only in Vader's presence in A New Hope, only seeing him kill his mentor and father figure, not meeting up with Vader until Empire Strikes Back. You can feel that tension and impact on Cloud City. Their last fight in Return of the Jedi being less epic, but more emotional and long lasting. But I still credit Dana and the crew for doing their own thing. I really like to see it. Bellos' defeat was so awesome though. There's two important details I would like to point out. Luce and Ida saying their magic is from the heart, referencing back to season one episode, The Intruder. The other being the most widely known, now eat that sucker, when Luce kills Bellos. Uh, dating back all the way to the first episode, A Lying Witch and A Warden. What an amazing battle with such beautiful animation Props to the team on this one. Unfortunately, that sadly wraps up the Owl House. We got our four-year time skip to Luce's 18th birthday. And we got to see everyone one last time, which I was really afraid wasn't going to happen. They kept like teasing it with the introduction of everyone's future designs, but quickly they started the show up very quickly i would like to make a last comparison to amphibia these shows are both so similar but so different in lots of ways both finales being a big example of it sure the girls won in the end they eventually in some way shape or form return home amphibia is a story about growing up not being afraid to let go and leave childish things behind the calamity trio even staying on earth themselves growing apart and later reconnecting the owl house did the opposite loose truly embraced herself finally being understood by her mother and accepted by the demon realm on her 18th birthday deciding to stay and embrace her good witch origins she learned so long ago i think the owl house was a very great show it did a lot it really did um when I first watched it back in, what was it, 2020, uh, at the height of the pandemic, it was really a show I could literally just sit down and watch and just enjoy, and it, it made me love cartoons again. Um, uh, I hate to go back to Amphibia, because I know this is an Owl House video, but you know when I first watched Amphibia in 2019, I wasn't really a big fan of it. Uh, I thought it was a, there was a lot of filler, but you know, eventually a couple years uh, later, I came around to Amphibia. But uh, at the time, I just really, really wasn't interested in Amphibia. So when the Owl House came out, it was kind of something I could connect with because it was very similar to you know Gravity Falls, Star Versus, Pen Zero, the type of shows that I really liked to watch as a kid. So uh, being in 2020, I was. I was 14 so I was the same age as the main character uh so I mean that really means a lot to me being the same age as the character and growing up with the character it was so it was so cool uh to see Luce's adventure unfold uh I thought season one was great um it was an amazing journey um season two I again uh I say this a lot I'm very open about this, but I, I think season two wasn't the best uh, season. I thought it was really mediocre, and I want to make a video about it. But, I mean, hey, it's it, it it's it's great, though. I mean, The Owl House is great. Uh, season three was, you know, slightly, not slightly, but it was uh, unfortunately cut short. So that was a big fault on Disney's part because I believe season three could have been really good and i mean just what we got I, it, you know i 
I go on record saying I don't think this was season three. I call this Owl House the movie, basically, because it's I mean, it's three 44 minute specials, you know, could just combine that all. They, it should have just been a TV movie, uh, but they just slapped a label on it and called it season three. But I thought Owl House, the movie, quote unquote, was really good. Uh, and, you know, other than some slight, uh, you know, uh, differences in the way I wanted some characters to go um the owl house was a great story and i hope as i as i say uh later i hope it reaches out to everyone who loves weird stuff who you know is interested in this type of theme uh you know fantasy and adventure and you know being a weirdo you know it you know there's nothing wrong with being a weirdo as we um as we find out from the show uh, it's actually very great and um you know i i don't do a lot of this i i, I might have made just one video of me just going completely off script and just talking but i mean this means a lot to me this channel means a lot to me i know i haven't been on the channel in a while but that's because i've just been procrastinating and i've just been dealing with other stuff but i'm trying to just get back into it because this channel does mean a lot to me and i want to explore more on this channel before it is unfortunately time to go so uh i'm i'm gonna get back and make more videos this this video has really inspired me to go back and make some more so you know it's it's been a fun ride the owl house um i don't know if this will be my last owl house video but it's it's been fun and uh and uh i i, I love it I'm, I'm i'm glad i got to experience the owl house Hate it or love it, the Owl House was an explosion of diversity, color, wonder, and adventure. I hope Luz Noceda was able to change someone's life, because she surely did mine's. Do you watching out there, don't you ever forget that us weirdos, we've got to stick together. If you enjoyed this video, Make sure you leave a like and subscribe. Comment down below your thoughts. Without further ado, I've been the Rackless Guy. Up, up, and away, and I'll see you weirdos later. Bye. To get this far as I've gotten, I'm a pretty girl, walks by my... Oh. Little bit, little bit is perfect. I don't know. Yeah, I.